Hello there guys and welcome back to another episode of How to Feed the Beast in Minecraft. I am Unstable Voltage and today we will be taking a look at the multi-farm block from the forestry mod. In a previous video we built our peat farm and we also built our wheat farm in the same way. Now these this type of farm is actually an older style of farm from the forestry mod and the current version of forestry these farms are disabled. They still work in Feed the Beast but they are going to be phased out in the future so we need to have a look at the newer but more complex multi-farm block. Okay so I'm not going to show you guys how to create each individual block because there's quite a lot to it so what I'm going to show you is the bits you will need and how to put the farm together. Now machinery wise you're going to need to have a carpenter and a thermionic fabricator which we covered in one of the very first episodes and you're also going to need to have yourself a soldering iron which we made in the last episode. So. A multi-farm is a machine which is made up of several blocks. Now all of the farm blocks can be made from a variety of materials. You can use stone bricks, mossy stone bricks and cracked stone bricks. You can use normal bricks. You can also use smooth sandstone and chiseled sandstone, nether brick, chiseled stone bricks. And you also need various other components to make the farm block work. So. As well as the farm blocks which are the base building material, you are going to need a gearbox which allows you to get power into the multi-farm. You're going to need a hatch which allows you to pipe the materials in and out of the farm. You are going to need a valve which allows you to place water into the farm and optionally you may wish to have a farm control. This essentially just allows you to turn the farm on or off with a redstone signal. Now these extra pieces for the farm must be of the same block type so if you're going to make your farm blocks from stone bricks you need to have your control and your gearbox and your hatch made from stone bricks. If your farm block is made from normal bricks then things like your hatch will need to be made from bricks if you're using chiseled sandstone for your farm blocks, you're going to need chiseled sandstone to make things like the valve. You are also going to need um, a stack or two, depending on the size of the farm, of the regular building material. So if you have made your farm blocks from stone bricks, you're going to need a stack or two of stone bricks. A uh, couple of other things you're also going to need here. An aqueous accumulator which is from the thermal expansion and I'll explain why later and some buckets of water so we will get on and do that bit now so what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, pick up all of those pieces there I'm not going to bother with the control because I'm not bothered about turning the farm on or off with a redstone signal so let's head out and have a look at our building plot Okay, so we're now outside. And for those of you who watched the last video, you might have recognized this little structure here. Now, you can build the multi-farm on top of the ground, but because it's quite a large structure, I like to try and conceal most of it under the ground. And the multi-farm itself is always four blocks high, but it can be a varying number of sizes in width and length. Now, I'm going to go for the four by four block which is represented by that wooden frame in the middle. That wooden frame will eventually be destroyed, but I just placed it there as a placeholder so that I could map out the rest of the area and so you guys could get an idea of the size that it was going to take up. Also, the multi-farms are more diamond shape as opposed to square shape like the traditional farms. There are a varying number of different size farms you can have, ranging as small as 3x3 three three blocks, which will result in 36 farm blocks and they go right up to a 5x5 five five multi farm which will give you 100 farm blocks. But I'm going for the 4x4, four four, the medium large farm and that will give me 64 farm blocks. So there's a 5 block radius all the way around the centre and as you can see I've dug a hole into the ground which is a 5 block radius around where the farm block will be and I've just lined the edge with some wooden planks. So let's go down into the hole and we can have a look at starting to build the farm. 
Okay, so we're now down inside the hole that I've dug. Uh, I have an access in and out which just leads through this corridor back to the entrance to the peat bog, so I can get in and out that way. And down here I've also placed a bank of peat fired engines which will eventually supply power to my farm. Uh, don't need as many as this, but um, I thought, well, I got quite a lot left over, so I've just stuck them all on. Um, the farm is quite power hungry, and the more engines you have, the faster it will work. Uh, but uh, I just stuck a load down there. So this structure here is four blocks high, uh, four blocks wide, and four blocks long. And this will be replaced by our multi-farm. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just go around with my axe and destroy all of these wooden blocks. So be right back. Okay, so now we've got the wooden frame destroyed and I can now go around with my farm blocks and start to build the farm. Now, you'll notice it was standing on a platform, which doesn't seem like it's quite wide enough and there's this strange little bit that sticks out. Um, that isn't something you need to do, but it's there for a reason which you will see in a moment. So, the first thing I'm going to do is place on the floor the 4x4 in farm blocks, which will then allow me to see the size. So there we go, there is 4x4. Four four. Now the multi-farm will be solid so you have to fill in all the blocks on the inside and what we're going to do is we also need to start placing our other blocks. So this block here on the side I'm just going to destroy that with my pick, pick it back up, and what I actually want there is my gearbox because this is where the power is going to be coming in so if we pop the gearbox in this corner then we'll be able to connect this conductive pipe up there and we will have our power now we're also going to need water so what I'm going to do on this block here I'm going to again destroy that with my pick back and I'm going to put down the valve now it's the valve that allows us to, um, if we wanted to, pipe water uh, directly into the farm block. But instead what we're going to do is we're going to use this, the aqueous accumulator. Now as I said the aqueous accumulator is actually from the thermal expansion. Now what the aqueous accumulator does, apart from being very difficult to say, is if you place it um, with water, at least two blocks of water on the same horizontal level, it doesn't require power and it will actually automatically pump water from the surrounding blocks, oh, clicked in the wrong place, from the surrounding blocks and automatically pass them into the valve. So we don't actually, it works like a build craft pump except it doesn't require power and it's not going to use any of the water. Hence why I'd made this little sort of uh, trough to put the water in and why I brought three buckets of water with me. So let's carry on and build the next level up. Now just because it's easier to access what I'm actually going to do as well is destroy this block at the front and I'm going to put my hatch in here. Now for a start I'll be just putting stuff in manually but that's a good as place as any to put it if I want to pipe things in. So we need to go across and build the rest of our farm. I'm sure why it keeps moving the block around from, uh, from space to space, that's a little weird. If we can avoid it doing that, there we go. Just when you think you've got Minecraft sussed, it always surprises you. Now, as I said, the farm blocks are always uh, four blocks high. And the third block up, or the, the one row from the top, this block must always be only farm blocks. So, out of the four levels, your valve, your hatch, your gearbox and your control, you can put those on the bottom level or the next level up and you can even put them on the top level but you can't use them on the second to top level. Um, not 100% sure why, I just know you can't do it. I'm just going to use a farm block to nerd pole back up here so I can get on top. Place the final blocks down. Come on. and it will turn into a farm hopefully there we go as you can see it's now got this uh, 
big thick black band that has appeared all the way around. Uh, I expect that's the reason why that uh, level always has to be solid farm blocks so it can do that. But there you go, we now have our multi farm. Let's just reclaim that. And if I go over to the multi farm and right click on it, you can see I now have the farm interface. It's already full of water, which is fantastic because it's being pumped in through the aqueous accumulator and the valve, although we can put buckets of water in there directly. Um, it's uh, set to a manual farm at the moment, so that is absolutely fine. Now, as you can see, by default, the farm is a managed arboretum which means it will plant trees but the good thing with the multi farm is you can actually set it to do a variety of functions but before we do anything else we need to actually build a uh, level base for it to plant the crops on because as you can see at the moment it's just a block in a hole this is the reason why you needed to bring along some stone bricks or whatever the building material is that you were building the farm blocks out of. Now you can actually build the level base on a number of different levels. You could build it on this level, so you could build it um, beneath the multi farm and you can also build it on any of the four levels. You can't build it on top of the multi farm, that won't work. So what I'm going to do for mine and it's the reason I've dug this hole, is I'm going to build uh, my base on this level, uh, the second level, and then when I put the soil in, it will be level with the ground. So bear with me while I uh, do all that, and I'll see you in a second. Okay, so there you go. I've now completely filled in that layer, which is level with the um, second top level of the multi-farm block, and we are now completely enclosed in. I already had some torches around just to keep the place lit. Uh, we've got our power there ready to go. We've got our water supply, um, but I don't want to uh, have an arboretum. I don't want trees. I actually want to make this a wheat farm, and that is where the soldering iron comes in. So let's just quickly pop outside and have a look what this looks like from the top. So here we are outside and it already looks a lot neater than it was before. You can see um, one block here where I actually uh, missed some stone bricks. So let's fill that in. Just double check, make sure I've done the whole thing. And you can see the top layer of the multi farm and again I should be able to right click on that and we can access the interface from here and as you can see we still need to put the substrate in so uh, in the case of a wheat field the substrate would be soil and when the soil is in it will be level with the rest of the ground and will fit very neatly inside this little border and one of the interesting things about the multi farm block is you can actually have four different crops growing in the field at once because the multi farm is actually split into four smaller farms. So these lamps represent the total size of the multi farm with the farm block in the middle and the lit farm to the north is farm number one, the south farm which is farm number two, the east farm number three and the west farm which is number four and those four farm blocks correlate to the four different areas that we have on the interface but we want to change those because as I said before I want wheat not trees so let's go back to the workshop so all I really need to pick up here is an intricate circuit board so you need to make one of these using your um, carpenter and the intricate circuit board is what allows us to change the multi farm to grow other things. You're also, in the case of wheat, going to need um, four bronze electron tubes, and those are made using the thermionic fabricator. So, place the soldering iron on your hotbar, uh, point it away from any sort of block, and right click, and that will bring up the soldering iron interface. Now, as you can see along the top here, there are various different things you can do with a soldering iron, um, electric engines, managed farms and manual farms. Now a multi farm can be a managed farm or it can be a manual farm. The difference between the two, a managed farm will automatically place down the substrate, so i.e. the soil or the sand, whatever you need to grow. It will automatically plant the first crop of seeds and it will continually harvest and replant those crops. 
The difference between a manual farm is the manual farm won't put down the substrate and it won't plant the initial seeds, but it will continue to harvest and replant anything that grows. The advantage of having a manual farm is that you can grow uh, a wider variety of crops. Now you can have a combination of four different crops growing on each farm, but you can't mix manual and automated farms together. So we're going to go for the managed farms and I'm going to place the intricate circuit board in here on the top right hand corner of the soldering iron. And I'm going to take my four bronze electron tubes and place them here in the four slots. Now as soon as I add the fourth one, we now have an intricate circuit board for a managed farm and all four of them become crops. So we take that out, put that back into our inventory and we are done with our soldering iron. Okay, so I'm going to pick up a few other things from the chest. I'm going to need some seeds because we need those to plant. We are going to need the substrate, so I'm going to pick up the dirt. And you're also going to need fertilizer. Now, fertilizer is made from apatite, so you will need to go mining for that. And you mix the apatite with either sand or ash, because we've got quite a lot of that from all of our peat-fired engines. And you do get quite a lot of fertilizer from a small amount of apatite, and it lasts quite a long time as well. So let's head back to the farm and get it set up to become a wheat farm. Okay, so here we are. I did have a quick pit stop just to tidy up my inventory a little bit and also I needed to pick up a extra golden conductive pipe to wire up the power downstairs. So we're going to take our intricate circuit board and drop it here in the empty socket in the middle and now we just turn this whole thing into a wheat farm. The fertilizer goes here in the bottom slot and we need to put our dirt and seeds in these blocks at the top. So this is input, this is output and if we just shift click they will go in uh, we usually do anyway. Um, the other good thing to remember about the um, managed farm, particularly if you are piping things in via the hatch, is that the farm automatically puts things into the right places and take things out of the right places. So you can just pump your fertilizer and your dirt and your seeds all in through the hatch and the farm will automatically put them in the right place. So the only thing left to do is go downstairs, wire up the power and turn it on. Okay, so we're just going to attach this final golden conductive pipe, and there you go, you can see it has actually connected to the gearbox. Flick the switch to turn on the engines, and if we right click here, you can see we're doing something, we're using dirt, let's quickly get outside and see what's going on. And there you go, you can already see that the farm is starting to place down the soil. It has automatically placed down the irrigation channels and filled them with water and it has started planting the seed as well. So there you go, a fully working multi-farm, has a variety of uses and doesn't look too bad either. Well guys, thank you once again for watching, I'm really happy that I have managed to complete one of my more ambitious projects so far in uh, Feed the Beast, uh, we have our fully working multi-farm. I hope as always that you found this video entertaining and informative, if you have please as usual like, subscribe and share, and if you've got any ideas for things you'd like to see in future videos, if there's a particular machine or item you'd like me to build and demonstrate, please either send me a message or leave a comment in the box below and I can work on that for you next time. So until then, I have been Unstable Voltage and I will see you on the next video. Goodbye!